I don't know if you discovered this or not, but we too are in the process of healing. We're not standing before you as healed. We're in the same process as you guys. Now, some people, oh, man, I don't know if I want to go to a church where the pastor's getting healed. Well, I tell you what, then guess what? I don't care where you go, you're there. The only difference is that other pastor's lying to you and putting on the front that everything's okay. Good morning. Oh, now well, that was weak. Good morning. good morning. Yeah. I thought I heard somebody shout good morning back over the internet to us. Good morning. If you're watching us, God bless you. We're, we're thankful that you're here watching us and sharing with us. Uh, we just have had a wonderful time of worship and fellowship so far. And uh, we're, just, we're just believing God for some good things. I, I want to, uh, oh man, I'm so pumped up. I told Kareen this morning, it's like I just can't get away from this. The more I study, the more I read the more I'm aware of what this stuff, this grace is doing in my life. It's just, it just keeps coming. The revelation just keeps coming and coming and coming. And uh, I, I'm just so just blessed by that. Um, I want to um, share a couple thoughts with you. And, I, and we started this the last couple of weeks, and those are kind of introductions to, to where I want to get to today and next Sunday as well. But uh, if I'm going to put a title on today's message, it is How I... Pray for you, part one. How I pray for you, part one. How many know I pray for you? I pray for you very often. And um, I don't pray for you from a standpoint of religious uh, standing. I pray, to you, pray for you as the Holy Spirit leads me and guides me. Uh, oftentimes in the middle of the night I pray for you. Individuals will come to my mind. I'll pray for you. I'll lift you up, Karina and I. When we get a phone call that someone's in trouble, we pray for you. We minister, of course, in those realms. But, uh, but one of the things that I do oftentimes is pray for the church in general. You know, I pray for New Covenant Grace Fellowship, and this is what I pray, and this is my prayer for, for the congregation. I want to, however, before I start, I want to touch on one of those problem verses of Scripture. I know there's some problem verses of Scripture that uh, boy, we, it's hard to get our, our handle around. And uh, to be honest with you, this, this verse that I'm going to share with you, I've yet to ever hear a grace minister minister anything on it. And the reason is, is because when we come into grace, this is one of those verses we kind of like to put away because, of, because we overreact to some of the bad experiences we've had in our life. But this is a real troublesome verse to a lot of people within the grace camp. It's in Hebrews chapter 13, and it's verse 17. Hebrews 13, verse 17, and I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. It says, Obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls, and they are accountable to God. Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That is would certainly not be for your benefit. Now, the interesting thing is the King James, so this says obey your spiritual leaders. The King James says that submit word. You know, we want to get rid of that word. <clears throat> Here's the problem with this verse of Scripture. And I'm, and I'm going to talk to you about from the standpoint of the way I used to preach that verse of Scripture versus the way I see this verse of scripture today. Um, again, a lot of people, because of what we have gone through in our past church experiences, don't like this verse of scripture one iota. And the reason is, is because pastors, unfortunately, I was one of them at one time, would use this verse of scripture as a shotgun that I put to people's heads. You know, you don't like what I'm teaching, then bless God, you better obey, because if you don't, bang, I'm going to pull the, the, this, this verse of scripture out and shoot you with it, you know. And that verse of scripture is used like that, in that connotation, many times. Submit to me, because I'm the grand poobah, and you're not, you know. God has created me... I am the pastor. You know what? We've got this, 
this rule, uh, we, we've got this position in the church called pastors right now. It's only mentioned a couple of times. It is mentioned, by the way, so we can't just t totally throw it out. Some people will throw it out and say, well, it's only mentioned once or twice, so let's throw it out. Well, it's mentioned once or twice, so let's not throw it out. You know, it's still there, but let's bring it down in its level of importance. All right? Yes, I have been called to be a pastor as well as a few other things, but my important my important calling is to be in a relationship of love with everybody that I minister to. More importantly than me lording it over your life, telling you what to do and don't do all the time, is for me to be in a love relationship with you, wherein we can just love on one another and work through our issues together. One of the things that most pastors don't want their people to ever see is their own personal weaknesses. That's why in a lot of churches, you will never see what happens in our church all the time. We hang out with y'all. We go, and, and here's the reason why a lot of, I was taught in Bible, honest to God, I was literally taught this in Bible college. You never get too close to your people because you don't want them to see how weak you really are and what will happen to you as you get close to them. They will do something. They will leave you. They will hurt you. They will disappoint you. And if you don't get close to them, you never have to worry about that. Now, that happens. I can't tell you how many times I've been hurt, Kareem's been hurt, by people that we loved and ministered to. Can't tell, you know, and sometimes people look at me. I, I tell Joe all the time this. Because sometimes I'll, something will go on. Thank God we don't have a lot of trouble in our church. But the few times, very few times we've ever had any issues, it's like all of a sudden my armor goes up automatically. It's a, it's a defense mechanism that rises up. And Joe says, well, why are you letting that happen? You know, that, just get, get over it. It's not, well, you don't understand. You get stabbed in the back enough times, you, you kind of wait, stay away from a person with a knife. Now, I know people talk about, well, sheep get pasture bit. But guess what? There's a lot of pastors that get sheep bit. And either way, it's not a good deal. So it's not fun either way it goes. No matter which end of the receiving end of the knife you're on, just stay, you know. So what happens is that mechanism automatically goes up within us, and, and Joe will say, well, it'll be okay. You know, just I don't understand why you're reacting that way. Well, I still I got some wounds in my back that you've never seen, you know. I've had some knives stuck in my back that you don't even know exist. But they're, but they're there. They're, old things have passed away, see? And that's where, so Kareen and I get this about this, about us, okay? I don't know if you discovered this or not, but we too are in the process of healing. We're not standing before you as healed. We're in the same process as you guys. Now, some people, oh, man, I don't know if I want to go to a church where the pastor's getting healed. Well, I tell you what, then guess what? I don't care where you go, you're there. The only difference is that other pastor's lying to you and putting on the front that everything's okay. Yeah. Nothing wrong with me. It's you, you know. I've been telling that about Jim all the time. Nothing wrong with me, brother. It's always you, you know. It's, but but you all understand what I'm talking about on that? So that's why, yeah, that's why, that's why when I'm saying some of this stuff here. So, you know, I used to use that. That's a defense mechanism versus scripture that comes up when the pastor's being challenged is in trouble, right, wrong, or indifferent. Because sometimes you can use this rightly. But a lot of times we would use it wrongly because it was a part of that defense mechanism that, bam, it would just jump up and you say, now hold up, brother, you're supposed to submit to me because if not, you know, how am I going to be praying for you? This is what I used to say. How do you want me to pray for you? Oh, God, just bless Joanne. Pour your spirit out upon her. Give her, just release everything in her. Or, Lord, change that doggone Joanne. Amen. You know? Come on. You, you understand what I'm saying? So we, we would put that as kind of a fear tactic. You know, how do you want me to pray? Well, here's what I'm learning. What I am learning. I mean, I, I can't tell you the download I had just this week um, on some stuff, this, just this week, regarding some doctrine, some different things that I, I just can't share with you now. There's just no time for it, and nor is it the right place yet, the right time yet. But, but here is what I'm learning. 
let's just say Joanne, maybe, she doesn't, but let's just say, I'm picking on her because she's in the front row. That'll teach you. <laughs> it, let's just say she did need some changing. Here's the way I would pray now. No longer, oh God, change that doggone Joanne. But Lord, here's some things that I see from the scriptures that I can pray in the right way over Joanne where the battle is no longer mine, it's totally the Lord's. And the Lord begins to work because what I'm doing is I'm removing myself from the issue, you see, and I'm watching God do some work. I'm learning. Now, I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. So don't ever wonder. Sometimes you may come to me with something. You may push one of my buttons, and I might, you may get a reaction that you may not like. Just understand, you've per pushed one of the buttons to my hurt, you know, just like I can push the button to your hurt from time to time, all right? Because I have hurts too, you know? I have, I have monkeys on my back that I have to deal with every Sunday, you know? Sometimes people say, wow, what's wrong with you? You're, you look so quiet, you're so upset. Well, I, I'm dealing with my monkeys, you know? And, and, I, and I just want to be free from that, and I'm getting there, but it's a slow but sure process. So I want you to understand that. So this verse of scripture, now here's the other thing about this. It is there. It is there. Okay? And, you know, and a lot of grace people, because of the abuse that's been used with this grace, this, this verse of scripture, they'll take it, they won't even mention it, they won't even talk about it. It's still there. There is a proper godly leadership and order that's, that's within the body of Christ. And, you know, God has put us into the body. Some of us have been put in as pastors and teachers and apostles, evangelists, and, and so on and so forth. So, you know, we have the fivefold ministry that he has put in. That is a gift to the body of Christ. He's not called us all to be that, but some are. And so there is a proper order here. I, I was thinking of, of, of this, skipping back a, a, a verse here too, you know, in, in, in Hebrews. Um, oh, Lord. Um, Chris, I wrote down underneath Hebrews 13, just for the sake of time, uh, under 13, 17, what's the next one I wrote? 13, 7, right, verse 7. Uh, remember your leaders who taught you the word of God. Think of all the good that has come from their lives and follow the example of their faith. So, you see, we have a responsibility. And, and I believe Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. We have no proof of that. But I believe Paul, did. if he did, that adds credence to this. Because number one, it's there. Number two, it reads like something that Paul would write and say. But number two, if Paul indeed did, then he received this from direct revelation from Jesus Christ himself. So there is a proper spiritual authority that's set up in the church. You see? Like in Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians, when the, when the guy was messing around with his, his uh, stepmother-in-law, Paul came in like gangbusters, didn't he? He said, look, there's a place for church discipline here. We've got to deal with it. We can't let this guy continue to do this. We need to, to exercise him from the church and treat him as a mission field so that we can bring him back in. You know? So there is, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that Paul had some spiritual authority in the areas and the lives of those that he ministered to. It's, it's just, it's very evident. But it wasn't to be abused, and it wasn't to be something that was used as a crowbar against people that would come against him and rise up against him. Um, so I want you to see that there's this proper way. Now, thinking about that, you know I'm leading to the Ephesians prayers, and I don't know if I'm even going to get into there, there fully yet today. Uh, I tried last week, and, but, I, but I felt like bringing some more bulletin, bullet points on uh, Ephesians, and, and these verses I, I'm not going to ask us to look at. I just want you to listen to these, and this is just a synopsis. I'm not going to read these verses, but in verses 1 through 14 of Ephesians chapter 1, listen to these things. These are some of the things. I just wrote down these, just jotted these down this morning. But, but listen to this. I mean, this is the stuff we talked about last week. And I told Karina this morning, I said, man, I can't, no! It just blows me away. I write this stuff down this morning, and I'm getting blasted. I'm sitting there on, the, on our living room sofa. Whoa! You know, I'm getting drunk in the spirit a little bit because, man! And, I, and I'm just starting to get a hold of some of this stuff, and it just literally tears me up. It messes my life up. And I said, I can't believe it. She said, well, it's amazing, you know? 
I said, I, I said, no way, I tell you what, I don't even hardly want to go minister this morning because I know I'm going to work real hard today. And, he said, well, and you don't understand what I'm saying because, you know, here's what happens. When you get up and you start ministering this stuff, you get so tied up into this stuff emotionally, it just messes you up physically and mentally and, and all kinds of stuff. You know, it just, you know, uh, the, the glory that you begin to walk in, just as you begin to talk this stuff and minister this stuff, just stop and think what happens if you'd say it to yourself out loud once in a while. But, but listen to these, these points we all covered last Sunday in that message last Sunday, all right? And these are from Ephesians chapter 4, 1 through 14, all right? Number one, and this is in verse 1. I guess I'll give you the verses. Um, Ephesians is written to God's holy people. Holy people. Holy people. Now, that'll preach. I'm going to try to not preach, but I already did that on these. But, but try to just go through these. Ephesians was written to God's holy people. Number two, Paul pronounces grace and peace over his holy people. Okay? Peace always follows grace. Number three, and this is from verse two yet, Jesus has, past tense, blessed us with every spiritual blessing. I can stop right there. How many people are going to church today? They're, they're seeking to get blessed. You know, bless me, Lord. I need blessings. I need blessings in my life. But what happens is he has already blessed us. Now you say, I'm not seeing that blessing in my life. Let me tell you something. You get your handle around what I just read to you, and you begin to start believing that, guess what you're going to begin to see physically take place? Let me tell you something. Come on. Let me tell you something. This is the way it is. You get blessed inside of your heart. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to affect your entire life. May not happen overnight, but you rest assured this is guaranteed. This is guaranteed. You know? If this doesn't happen to you in the next year or two or whatever, you can go ahead and tell Kathy that you want your offering back today. Seriously. When you understand it, that you are blessed, you have been, past tense, blessed in every, every, key word, every spiritual blessing. That's who you are. And you start believing that. And you start saying that. Come on. You start confessing that over your life. It, it just begins to manifest. It starts happening. All right? Uh, verse 4. Get this. Before God made the world, he loved us, and he chose us to be holy and without fault in his sight. God chose us to be holy and without fault in his sight. Before the world ever began. Whew. Verse 5, God decided in advance to adopt us into his family. You were decided before you were even born that you were going to be in the family of God. Guess what? Here we are. <clears throat> Let me just say this. Guess what? That's for all of mankind, too. How many know you don't have to believe this in order for it to happen? The fact of the matter is, it happened. All of mankind is included in this formation of God. Our job is to tell them about it. Say, hey, you're a part, brother, whether you like it or not. I, I've been noticing this. You notice I said, brother, I've been telling people, I've been calling brother, I've been calling people that I just know downright just don't want anything to do with God. I've been calling them brother lately. Seriously, I have. I've been doing it lately. I just been, hey, brother, you know, some of my fishing buddies online, different things, and I know some of them. And I said, ah, brother, come on, you know, what about this? And why? And I'm just finding this. I'm not, I'm not deliberately trying to do that. I'm just doing it. I'm just doing it because I'm knowing that in my heart something's really working there. Now my job is to have that relationship with them and tell them what it's all about. But God decided in advance to adopt us into his family, and guess what? This gave God great pleasure. He said, oh, 
God, not me. You don't want me in your family. <laughs> I'm such a mess up. But this guy gave God great pleasure. It gave God great, ple- it gave God great pleasure to adopt us into his family before the foundation of the world. Just think of what pleasure he gets when you and I start coming into these revelations of grace. Oh, my lands. You know, there's, there's pictures of actually Jesus dancing. You know, dan- Jesus did dance. And, and, and so, you know, that, but can you imagine what goes on when we start coming into these revelations of what grace is all about? And we reject that world of religion. We say, we don't want that anymore. Let's get rid of that. And he starts getting happy in heaven. And they start dancing up there. The angel band starts strumming some good fast music. And they get going. They just get down on it. Come on. Because there is joy in that. There's joy in that. You do not make God happy by trying to follow him according to law. And the reason why you do not make God happy doing that is because he has finished that. What really makes him happy is when we're coming into the fullness of the finished works of the cross. Now, that means he is happy with each and every one of us at certain different levels. Do you all understand that? He cannot be happy with Shannon and me equally. And the reason is, is because Shannon is far beyond me. So she's at a different realm in God than I am. Okay? So our happiness, his happiness is with us at where we are at. See? Instead of trying to prove ourselves and to be something, he said, man, I love that son, my son David, man. I just see what, he, what he's doing, how he's getting, oh, yeah, you know, you know that Zach, he's, he's just so special, and, and all the, I'm so happy with him, my son. And then there's Steve, you know, and, and then, you know, I'm happy with him. And then Emmett's messing up all the time, but I'm still happy with him. You know, we'll, we'll leave Bill right out of it there, but he's happy with Bill too. <laughs> Glory. And yeah, Ange, well, that's, come on. It gives God great pleasure when we come into this stuff, when we start getting hold of it. Listen to this, verse 7 now. God purchased our freedom and forgave all of our sins. God purchased our freedom. And this is all from Ephesians chapter 1. He purchased our freedom and forgave all of our sins. Verse 8. He has shown his kindness on us along with wisdom. No, let me get this right. I can't read my own writing. He has showered his kindness on us along with his wisdom and understanding. He has showered his kindness on us. He has, past tense. See? He has, past tense, showered his kindness on us. And along with that kindness, if that kindness wasn't good enough, what else does he do? He also showers on us his wisdom and understanding. Now don't ever say to God, God, you just don't understand what's going on in my life. Come on, because that dog don't hunt. See, well, God is saying, no, son, daughter, you don't understand what I've already done for you through the cross of Jesus Christ, my son. Just enter in. Verse 11, we have received an inheritance from God. Past tense. We have received an inheritance. Verse 11, I could, man, I could preach an hour on each one of these. Verse 11, he chose us in advance and made everything work out according to his plan. Here's that advance thing again. That predetermined plan of God in each and every one of our lives. He chose us in advance, and he makes everything, not just a few things, everything work out according to his plan. And I say, I'm not seeing too much of God's plan working out in my life. Hang on there, brother and sister, because you're in the right place to begin to see it. You get your thinking straightened out, begin to renew your mind with truth, Begin to see this stuff as it is in reality, and guess what begins to happen physically? Soon, sooner than later, 
you begin to see these things manifested and working out in your life physically. You all with me on that? Verse 12. He has identified us as his own by giving us the Holy Spirit. We are his own. And he has given us the Holy Spirit to identify, to seal all of these things that we are talking about here. That's coming by faith now. And when that happens, you see, the Holy Spirit comes and seals this all in us, and no one can steal it away from us. See, we, the other day we talked about, can, can we ever lose our salvations? Heavens no, we never can lose our salvation. No matter what we do, no matter what we go through, we are saved forever. We are forever saved. We are eternally saved and secure. So, he has identified us as his own by giving us the Holy Spirit. And, get this, get this in verse 14 now, the Holy Spirit is God's guarantee that what he says he will do. The Holy Spirit, because we have the Holy Spirit. So you say, what, what do I mean? Now, now let, me just ask, let me just say this. So you all understand where we're coming from here. Um, <clears throat> guess what? Every one of us has been given the Holy Spirit. Some of us, and all of us can, and probably all of us should, Speak in tongues. Because it's a part of receiving the Holy Spirit. Some of us don't for many reasons. You know, some of us have been taught <clears throat> some of that old bad teaching again. Well, that's of the devil and so on and so forth. But let me tell you something. Here's the way it works here. If you speak in tongues, you speak in tongues. If you don't speak in tongues, you don't speak in tongues. And no one's going to put the pressure on you. No one's going to give you the, the, the rough deal if you do or if you don't. I encourage you to seek that, and I'll help you. If anybody, anybody wants more about that and wants to understand that more deeply, I'll gladly work with anybody and minister to you. But it is, this is what happened on the day of Pentecost, right? They were in the upper room, what happened? The Holy Spirit fell, and they all, they all began to speak in tongues. And, and so there's a, there's a real truth to this. But, but it's, this is not one of the things that makes our church our church. And, and, I, and I'm just saying this just boldly to anybody. If you want to come to our church and you don't speak in tongues, you are more than welcome. And guess what? It's between you and God. I could care less if you ever speak in tongues. Please hear me. It's not the issue any longer. It used to be the issue. And then I began to realize... Why, am we al why are we always coming up with issues that cause division within the body of Christ? Why are we I believe in it. I speak, I'm like with Paul, I probably speak in tongues more than you all. And, and I believe in it. I believe that everybody can and, you know, it benefit everybody too. I can prove it to you from scriptures why it would probably be the best thing in the world for you. But it is not longer, any longer the issue. Here's what, this is what I'm learning, friends. This is where I'm really starting to see some things here. The issue in at New Covenant Grace Fellowship is Jesus and nothing, nothing else. Matter of fact, I was thinking, Matt, Matt's been telling me here the other day that, you know, we have over, what, over 100 videos now that we have out there? And I was thinking, you know what, probably some of those 100, I mean, I'm not all of them, I don't know for sure, but probably wouldn't hurt for me to go through those, some of those with you because there's probably some of them that should be nuked. You know, because I'll guarantee I probably don't feel the same way about some of those things even within the last year as I do today. I can think of a couple, three messages right now that probably wouldn't be too bad to, to, to just get rid of because we don't believe that way anymore. At least I don't, you know, because that doctrine divides. See, it divides. And I, we don't want division, we want truth. Now, here's, here's what we don't want. We don't want the division. We don't want the works to come in here. And, and you know what? And I, I, and I ask this in all honesty to people. You know, some, some brother talked to me on the phone here the other day. He said, well, you know, I, I believe certain ways. And I said, you know what? God, God bless you, you know. Who knows? Maybe a year from now I might believe the same way you believe. I don't know, you know. You don't have to change those things to come in. But, but, but by all means... 
you know, respect what's happening here too, you know. If you, if you feel like you've got some insight and you know that it's just going to go against the, the, the rub of, of the direction we're going to, talk to me about it, you know. Don't, don't just start pulling people. Here's where you get into trouble. Come on, I got some truth here. I want to show you guys some truth that pastor doesn't know about yet, you know. Come on, that, that's not right. See, that's a spirit of division. And that's, that's happened, you know, in all churches over the years. We've had it a few times here, not bad, but it's happened. So that's the kind of thing that you don't, that's where, you know, and I'm not saying they may be right. Maybe they know something that I don't know yet, but, you know, until I do, don't, don't release it to the body yet. Don't start calling people aside and having their special little meetings, you know. That, that's causing division. That's the wrong spirit. That's the wrong spirit. And we don't have that, but thank God, you know, just if somebody would ever come to you, psh, 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 you know, everybody says, well, one of the first things I always ask, and you, you, you can ask our leadership team about this. Someone will come, our, our leadership, someone will come, well, everybody's saying, well, who's everybody? You know, well, I, I don't want to tell you who everybody is. Then, then keep your mouth shut. Because if you can't tell me who everybody is, then don't, don't, don't say anything, because you're just causing problems, you know. Fair enough? Is that fair enough? Now, as you can see, I'm not going to get in how I pray for you, but I think you know where I'm headed. There isn't a way. I'm, if I start this, I'm gonna just going to, we'll be here till 3 o'clock in the afternoon. There, there just isn't no way. But, but you know what? Let's, let's just stop it right here, because this is a good place. This is, this is, again, some repeat. But was this okay? Is this helping you guys see our heart, to see what's going on here? And that's what I want more than anything else. I want this thing... I want to see you guys so blessed and prospered in every way, shape, and fashion. And, and I, you know what? I hear, when I hear things happening good to you, I get so excited. I don't think, oh, boy, I wish it would happen to me, you know. <laughs> I get so excited because I know that we're in this together in the body of Christ. You know, we just begin to see some good things happen. So I know it's a little early. But um, let's just stop here for the sake of time and pick it up next week, and that way we can go fully into context. And I don't want to give you the whole nine yards. I think, I don't know, I don't know about you guys, but personally I think those things that, that we just read from Ephesians 1 again, man, if you can get, like Chris said, just get a hold of one of those points today. Just get one hold of one of those points. And you know she said something about this Bible reading thing. You know, reading through the Bible, got to read through the Bible every year. You know what? I could care less if you read through the Bible in a whole year's time. Matter of fact, I would suggest you're probably hurting yourself if you do. Here's what you should do. Read something that the Holy Spirit places in your heart. Get a hold of that. And I can give you some good suggestions. Don't start in the Old Testament. Remember rule number one? Who's it written to? Get a hold of some good Bible teaching from the epistles that's written to you, the body of Christ today in the new covenant and get a hold of that thing and you know what if it's one verse of scripture just one and if you spend your entire year digesting that one verse of scripture letting it transform your life then god bless you because just what you're going to be a whole lot better than someone who read through the whole bible and doesn't have the slightest idea about what they read and think, oh, now I'm going to be blessed by God because I've read through the whole Bible. What did the early church do? They didn't have a Bible to read. How could they be so victorious as they were? And they went through a whole lot more than you and I will ever go through. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for this. We praise you for this. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise. And Lord, we just, wow, we just bless those that would be watching via YouTube, the Internet, our sister Levina in Australia has gone through some heart issues, and we, you know, the tests came back, and they weren't all that good. Sister, we just bless you right now in the name of Jesus. We declare healing over you. We declare the peace of God that passes all understanding to you. We thank you, Lord, for what you're, what you're doing in her life. We thank you, Lord, for a revival of grace in, in, in Australia, Lord. We're thanking you for that. Lord, and we thank you. for we, Our sister Sandy, who watches all the time, just lost her husband. We lift Sandy up. She wants to move into this area. She wants to come and be a part of our church, Lord. Father, you make the way. We place her in your hands that you would not only meet her needs, 
But Lord, that you just give her the leading and the guidance and the direction that she needs. And Father, anybody else that would be watching this morning, that there's these needs in their lives, Lord, we just thank you for moving on their behalf, believing you for great and wonderful, mighty things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. We're in agreement. God bless you. We love you. See you Wednesday night.